वन ऑफ द रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ डेटा लिंक लेयर इज टू हैव अ फ्लो कंट्रोल इज फ्लो कंट्रोल ना वॉट डू वी मीन माई फ्लो कंट्रोल इज दैट सपोज देर इज सम सेंडर ए विच इज सेंडिंग सम डेटा टू अ रिसीवर दैट इज सपोज बी ना इन दिस केस वॉट मे सो हैपन दैट ए इज सेंडिंग विथ सम स्पीड लेस सपोज लाइक लाइक देर कुड बी सम स्पीड लेस नॉट वरी अबाउट इट एंड बी इज नॉट एबल टू प्रोसेस विद दैट स्पीड विच मीन्स लेस सपोज दिस स्पीड एट विच ए इज सेंडिंग इज क्वाइट हाई कंपेयर टू the b that b can process the data so b will say to a that please slow down right because i am not able to process with this with this speed so please slow down this is called flow control or like in some cases it may so also happen that a is sending some data to b and a is sending with some less speed okay lesser speed compared to what b can process now we will say that if you can then if you can then please fasten up the speed if it is sending with some lesser speed and b can process with the higher speed then we will say that if you can then please fasten up the speed otherwise if it is sending with some higher speed like a is sending with some higher speed and b is not able to process with with that speed then we will say that please slow down like this this these scenarios comes under flow control and very simple flow control method is stop and wait which means what suppose a is sending this is that like this is how i will be representing these protocols so this is called timeline let me just tell you how how it is represented so i will i will just say that at t equal to 0 it is sending let's suppose this is a this is b at t equal to 0 a is sending some packet right a will send some packet so before that a need to transmit that packet on the link and then a will send some packet to b so uh, this is this is happening uh, with t equal to 0 it is like packet is here now at t equal to maybe the transmission time is let's suppose tt then after t equal to tt it will be here now after t equal to tt plus tp so after t equal to tt plus tp i will be here which means after after tp time from the transmission it the packet will reach here then we will say that okay let me just send the acknowledgement acknowledgement means like the packet has been received successfully and i am waiting for the next packet so this is what stop and wait means that a first sends the packet and stops after sending the packet and wait for the acknowledgement which means now we will do what we will transmit the acknowledgement so let's suppose this is the time for i'm that i'm taking to transmit the acknowledgement on the link and then this acknowledgement will get transferred to a right so this is the process of step by step and wait what we are doing here a is sending some packet and then waiting for the acknowledgement so this is the acknowledgement and this is the packet itself a is sending some data and waiting for the acknowledgement once the acknowledgement comes then it will send the next packet so suppose this is the next packet so a will send the next packet now i hope you got it let me repeat it again a is sending some packet and after sending some packet it is waiting it is stopping and waiting for the acknowledgement to come once the acknowledgement comes it is uh, sending the next packet this is what stop and wait means so in stop and wait after every packet after every packet we will be having some timer so every time the sender sends a packet it starts a timer which means that sender is sending some packet so it will start a timer some timer will get start here why timer like this timer is for that if the acknowledgement doesn't come because of some reason so what could be that reason that i will tell you because of some reason maybe let's suppose they be sending some acknowledgement and that acknowledgement is not coming maybe the acknowledgement is lost that is one of the reason maybe the data is lost and we will never get the data and then we will never send the acknowledgement so if by some reason if acknowledgement is not coming to a then this timer will take care of that which means there will be some timer which will get expired after some time and once the timer expires then a will again send the acknowledgement back sorry the data back so this is the data and this is the acknowledgement so there could be many cases first case is that first case if data 
is lost which means whenever a is sending the data a is sending the data this data is lost itself this data is lost itself and it never reaches to b this is b this is a it never reaches to b so after some time so there will be some timer after some time the timeout will occur the timeout of the timer will occur then a will say that okay i am not getting the acknowledgement maybe because of some reason maybe the data is lost i think then let me again send the data so a will again send the data right so this is how this timeout is helping us now there could be second case where your acknowledgement is lost ack is lost so let's say that this is a this is b and a is sending some data and now b will also send some acknowledgement and there will be some transmission time of acknowledgement but generally this transmission time is very less because acknowledgement size is very less so the transmission time if you remember it depends on the length of the message and bandwidth of the channel so generally the length of this message of the or for the acknowledgement is very less so that's why transmission time for the acknowledgement transmission time for the acknowledgement is generally very less because the length of the acknowledgement is very less so that is why generally we ignore this transmission time anyway suppose this acknowledgement is lost this time then also a is not not getting the acknowledgement back which means now a now this timer will again get expire after some time then a will say that see i am not getting the acknowledgement back maybe maybe this time acknowledgement is lost or data is lost it doesn't care so it, it will again send the packet this is how this timeout is uh, is helping us so i hope stop and wait is clear that is very very simple protocol where what we do we send a packet see here we send a packet and after sending a packet we stop like what could be the other case what could we do if we do not stop then what can we do we can pipeline the packets which means there are some pipeline protocols and that we will discuss uh, discuss later so there are some pipeline protocols which does what they do not wait for the acknowledgement to come they they just fill the channel uh, with the packets which means they keep on sending the packets instead of waiting for the first acknowledgement to come right so in stop and wait what we do we we send a packet like we send a packet once the packet is transmitted we wait for the acknowledgement to come and then once the acknowledgement come then we send the next packet this is how stop and wait works now let's talk about uh, now let's talk about the efficiency of stop and wait now before i discuss efficiency let me just tell you one more case so what may so happen whenever you are sending the data and the data is let's suppose uh, getting um, getting delivered successfully but it may so happen the data is corrupted right in that case also b will not send any uh, any acknowledgement so if data is corrupted then we will not send any acknowledgement we will simply discard the data so the silence of b tells that uh, like data is corrupted or data is lost both are same basically because b will not send the acknowledgement in both the cases data is lost or data is corrupted both are same in this case which means the data gets delivered to b but this data is corrupted so we will not take any action right if the data is corrupted then b will not take any action so let's talk about the efficiency in stop and wait now what do we mean by efficiency is that we are sending some packet and we are taking some time to transmit it to propagate it and then there will be some transmission time for acknowledgement and then acknowledgement will get propagated so we are taking different different times so this is the transmission time for data this is the propagation time this is again the propagation time for the acknowledgement and the for the for the data both are same why because propagation time does not depend on the length of the message it depends on the like uh, propagation time measures how much time it is taking from one bit to travel from one end to another end whether this bit is from the data or that bit is from the acknowledgement does not matter so this is the transmission time of acknowledgement which is generally very less so we will we will be just ignoring it and with the total time we are taking is this total time we are taking is tt plus tp plus this tt of acknowledgement then plus tp right so this is 2 tp which is called round trip time because uh, this is this is how we are round and tripping so 
no, like the data goes here and the acknowledgement is coming so the total time is called 2 tp is called round trip time and then tt plus t acknowledgement so generally this t acknowledgement is very less so let me just ignore it so it will be 2 tp plus tt right this is the total time that we are taking now in this total time how much time the sender is unblocked which means sender like we are utilizing the sender to send some data so this is the total time right the total time is tt plus tp plus let, let me just ignore this plus 2 no, tp again so 2 tp plus tt so this is 2 tp plus tt this is the total time and in this total time how much time we are utilizing we are only utilizing tt time right so the util, utilization will be or the this is also called efficiency or utilization will be tt because this is the time we are using upon the total time total time is this right this is the efficiency now if you just divide that with the tt then you will be getting let me just go on the next page so the efficiency that is also represented by eta is tt upon tt plus 2 tp now if you just divide it by tt then you will be getting 1 upon tt upon so it will be uh, 1 1 plus 2 tp upon tt right let me define a quantity a a equal to tp upon tt then the efficiency becomes 1 upon 1 plus 2 a. i hope you got the idea so efficiency is telling us that how much time the sender is unblocked so for uh, for uh, fraction of time so basically how much fraction of time upon uh, like uh, with respect to the total time the sender is unblocked so we are just using tt time and the total time we are taking is tt plus 2 tp even though there are some other times like acknowledgement time and there may be some other time like uh, the processing between uh, like there may, may be the routers between them and the processing of that and maybe the processing at the center side at the receiver side also so we are ignoring those times we are just taking this transmission time and these two propagation times in these in this total time we are just utilizing tt time so that is why efficiency is 1 upon 1 plus 2a now what is this a a is tp upon uh, t T, 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 t p upon t t so so what does this mean does this tell us anything or it is just a mathematical quantity yes it tells us something so a is number of number of packets we can fill in channel how how number of packets we can fill in channel how how this is a see here Suppose that you are taking 10 minutes to go from one end to another end. So your propagation time is 10 minutes. Right. Let me go to the next page. So your propagation time I am saying is 10 minutes, which means you are taking from one end to another end, you are taking 10 minutes. And your transmission time is let's suppose 2 minutes, which means you are taking 2 minutes to load the data on the channel. Now tell me how many packets, the question is that how many packets we can fill in this channel. See in 10 minutes what's going to happen? In 10 minutes one bit will travel from one end to another end, right? This is one bit that will get traveled from this end to this end in just 10 minutes. So this means that we have 10 minutes to load this channel, right? So we have 10 minutes only. To fill or to load this channel. So basically my question is that how many packets we can fill in this channel means that how many packets can be there in this channel at a time. So number of packets can be there number of packets can be there in channel at a time now we just have 10 minutes to load this channel and the transmission time is 2 minutes which means before this bit get travel to other end we can load 5 packets 
because 10 minutes we have total and one packet is taking two minutes then we can we can basically load five packets isn't it so we can load five packets in this channel before this bit get traveled to the other end this means that for the first packet like this is the first bit of the first packet then the for the first packet it will take just two minutes and then this packet like after two minutes this packet will reach somewhere here right and then after another two minutes there will be like we will be able to load the second uh, second uh, second packet and then after another two minutes we will be having two packets maybe maybe like this one packet is just here because i just loaded it and another packet may be here right but i know that this this bit will reach to the other end in in 10 minutes this bit will reach to the other end in 10 minutes so i i i still have uh, like two and two four so i still have six minutes left before this bit, this bit will reach to the other end so that's how like i have still six minutes in six minutes i can load three more packets right so that's how i am getting five packets i hope you got it so number of packets we can fill or the number of packets that can be present in the channel at a time is a now this enables us to understand this efficiency with one more definition so one definition by which we are understanding the efficiency is that this is the time we are utilizing and this is the total time right but we can understand this efficiency using the number of packets that we can fill in the channel so let's just uh, go to the next slide so what we are doing we are sending one packet right we are sending one packet and then waiting for the acknowledgement and once the acknowledgement comes we are sending the packet again now how many packets we can send in this total duration just see here how many packets we can send so uh, we can fill this channel which means we can send a packets here a packets like uh, uh, i mean a is the number of packets that uh, from which we can fill this channel and now once this acknowledgement is coming back once this acknowledgement is coming back then also we can we can fill this channel again so we can fill this channel two times which means we can send two a packets but there is a, a like one thing here like we can send two a packets but see here this acknowledgement whenever b is sending the acknowledgement then b will send the acknowledgement after observing or after receiving at least one packet right then only it will send the acknowledgement so like let's see the timeline carefully so once it sends let's suppose it is uh, it is send you are sending the packets continuously and uh, and there are a packets that you have filled right so after filling the a packets the first packet reach here reach here and this receiver which is b we will take this first packet which means this last bit of the first packet will get transmitted to b and then by that time you will again load one more packet so you have loaded total a plus one packets right i mean a packets you have loaded and then by this time this this packet get delivers to b you will again load one more packet because b will not immediately send the acknowledgement b will send the acknowledgement just uh, just after receiving after receiving at least first packet right so b will send the acknowledgement after receiving this packet that's why you are basically you you can send a a packet but a plus one packets basically why because we will start sending the acknowledgement after receiving this packet so you can send a plus one packet and then after a plus one packets like where a packets on the channel first packet has been received to b and then b will start sending the acknowledgement right and then there will be again a packets that you can load whenever this acknowledgement is coming back to you so there total you can load 2a plus 1 packets so these are the total number of packets that you can load and how much you are actually loading how much you are actually transmitting you are just transmitting one packet so this is the total number of packets total number of packets that we can transmit and how much we are actually transmitting is just one packet in this total duration right so that is why this is called efficiency so efficiency is 1 upon 1 plus 2 this is the like another understanding of efficiency now there is uh, there is one uh, like i mean um, different different authors basically prefer a different different convention so some of uh, authors does not prefer to add plus one here some authors prefer to add plus one which means like uh, they just say that efficiency is 1 upon 2a some of us uh, authors say that efficiency is 1 upon 1 plus 2a so let me just tell you so if you go to the forogen or 
this is the for, for origin, right so if you go to the for origin, they they have actually this is the quotient and they have actually calculated this quotient just using 1 upon uh, 2a not not using 1 upon 1 plus 2a and if you go to tenenbaum uh, this is gross. so if you go to tenenbaum then they have ex explicitly say, said that you need to add plus 1 because the an acknowledgement frame will not be sent until after a complete frame is received so they are saying that you need to add plus one because the b has to just receive the first packet completely first packet and then we will start sending the acknowledgement so you have like time for the 2a plus one packets not just 2a packets so uh, like uh, i have also referred to different sources like i have referred to mit uh, also so they have just uh, tell, to, told both cases they have just said if you want to add you can if you don't don't want to add one you you can just avoid adding one so it, it is up to you like i mean uh, it will be given in the question uh, the options will be according to uh, according to one of the one of the case either they will be adding uh, one or they want to be adding uh, adding one if that is the case that uh, that is a numerical answer type and then in that case, uh, they should give marks to everyone who, who is having uh, who is adding one and who is not add, adding one. So let's not worry about it. Okay. So efficiency, we will we will go with this. Efficiency is one upon one plus two a. Now let's solve one question. This is the question that uh, I have taken from MIT. So this is the question. And now in this question, they are saying that consider a forty kilo bits per second network link connecting the Earth to Moon. So bandwidth is given to 40 kilo bits. So this is the bandwidth, 40 kilo bits per second. The moon is about 1.5 light seconds from the earth, which means that from the earth, let's suppose this earth and this is moon. So the distance between moon and earth is 1.5 light seconds, which means what? Like uh, if I say one light seconds, it means that a uh, light second is basically uh, tells us that how much time, like how much distance a light travels from one end to another end in a second. So light second is distance that light travels in one second. And as we know that the this distance is 3 into 10 power 8 meters. Why? Because light speed is 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second. So in a second it travels 3 into 10 power 8 meters. This is one light second. Right? This is one light second. Now what about 1.5 light seconds? You can multiply with 1.5. So this is the distance about for the 1.5 light seconds. So it means that 1.5 into 3 into 10 power 8 meters. This is the distance from earth to moon that is given to us. Now the speed of data is not given to us. So uh, for the propagation time, we need the distance upon velocity. If speed is not given to us, we will just take it the velocity of light. So because in the optical fibers, generally the velocity is, is with the uh, like uh, speed of light. So it is not exactly speed of light. So it will be maybe 2.4 into 10 power 8. But if it is not given, we will take the speed uh, as a velocity of light. So it is in the meters. Now we will take it as 1.5 into 10 3 into 10 power 8 meters upon 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so you will be just getting 1.5 seconds so this is how we are calculating the propagation time so propagation time is let me just write it here 1.5 seconds and when width is given to us now uh, the packet length is also given which is 1 kilobyte so length of the packet is 1 kilobytes it is in kilobits so let me just convert it to also kilobits so one kilo so you can say eight kilo bits right eight kilo bits so so that both are in the bits now you need to find the propagation time or sorry the transmission time it will be length upon bandwidth so it will be eight kilo bits upon 40 kilo bits per second so it will be eight upon 40 seconds now if you just calculate it it will be one one upon five which is 0 0.2 seconds now the transmission time is 0 0.2 seconds and what they are asking where they are asking what is the utilization of link utilization or efficiency both are same so let's just calculate it so utilization or efficiency will be transmission time upon transmission time plus 2 into propagation time so the transmission time is 0 0.2 seconds upon 0 0.2 into sorry 0 0.2 plus 2 into propagation time is 1.5 right so it will be 
जीरो पॉइंट टू अपॉन जीरो पॉइंट टू प्लस थ्री विच इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट टू अपॉन थ्री पॉइंट टू सो यू कैन कैलकुलेट इट इट विल बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो सिक्स टू फाइव सो इफ दे आस्क इन द परसेंटेज जनरली इट इज मेजर इन द परसेंटेज हाउ मच परसेंटेज ऑफ द यूटिलाइजेशन दैट वी आर डूइंग और वॉट इज द परसेंटेज ऑफ द एफिशियंसी देन यू कैन जस्ट से इट इज द एफिशियंसी विल बी सिक्स पॉइंट टू फाइव परसेंटेज इन दिस केस नाउ देर इज वन मोर थिंग लाइक वॉट यू कैन डू इंस्टेड ऑफ एडिंग दिस टी टी एज आई टोल्ड यू द लाइक जनरली पीपल लाइक सम पीपल डोंट एड दिस टी टी सो इट विल बी एफिशियंसी इंस्टेड ऑफ लाइक वन अपॉन वन प्लस टू ए लाइक सम पीपल जस्ट से द एफिशियंसी इज वन अपॉन टू ए सो इफ यू डू डू बाई दिस मैथड इट विल बी वन अपॉन थ्री दैट विल बी जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स दैट विल बी बेसिकली इन द परसेंटेज इट विल बी सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स परसेंटेज If you do not uh, do not add this one, then this will be the efficiency. If you add the one, then this will be the efficiency, right? So you can do it now uh, in both the methods. Uh, like in the in the option, there will be only one of the option. If there are uh, that is N A T, then you can fill any one of them, and both should be the correct answer. Now you see here they they have given the answer in both of the format, which means like instead of adding uh, one, they have also given the answer in uh, from one upon one plus two a and from two a also. so this answer is from 1 upon 1 plus 2a this answer is from 1 upon let's sorry this answer is from 1 upon 2a this answer is from 1 upon 1 plus 2a and this answer is from 1 upon 2a so you can calculate it like in any of the way it does not matter now let's go to the next question in this question they are saying that on a wireless link the probability of a packet error is 0.2 so uh, like if you are sending some packet from this channel a to uh, this sender a to receiver b then the packet uh, will be lost or there will be some error in the packet is the, is having some probability of 0.2 and they are using stop and wait is used to transfer the data the channel condition is assumed to be independent of the transmission to transmission what is the average number of transmission attempts required for the transfer of 100 packets so if you remember from the probability then this question is very similar to uh, the question where i told you that uh, what is the number of tosses we need to uh, get first head expected number of tosses we need to get first head so basically what we did here we started like this we said like okay let's suppose the probability of head is p probability of tail is 1 minus p then if you if you get head here then you are done like you will stop it here so that's just one if you get if you get tail which means you are restarting the process so you will be doing 1 upon 1 plus ex expected number of tosses again so the expected number of tosses will be ex equal to p into 1 1 with p probability and 1 plus ex with uh, 1 minus p probability right and it was like you can calculate this expected number of tosses it was 1 upon p so i told you to actually remember this that if p is a probability of success then to to get first success you will you will be having 1 upon uh, p p trials right so similarly if the p is probability of uh, error then the probability of uh, probability of success will be like um, the packet is getting transmitted successfully it will be p p equal to like 1 minus p equal to 0.8 right now for the first packet only how much expected number of uh, packets you need to send for just first packet for one packet you need to send 1 upon 0.8 right for one packet you need to send 1 upon 0.8 packets and they want to send 100 packets so for 100 packets you need to send these man, these many packets which means it will be 125 so b is the answer let's do one more question suppose that you are sending from a to b you are sending from a to b and there are different different links to reach to b and let's suppose there are k links and every link is having the probability of pi for the failure which means this is with this probability the packet will not reach to this point and with this p2 probability the packet will not reach to this point and similarly there is like a uh, link from b to a and which is having the probability qi of the failure so pi is the failure probability failure probability from a to b and let's suppose qi is the failure probability for the acknowledgement okay for the acknowledgement that is coming from b to a now what is the probability that any packet and the acknowledgement corresponding acknowledgement comes uh, like packet goes from a to b and um, acknowledgement comes back to a so what is the probability that packet goes from a to b it will be 1 minus p1 that package goes from here to here 
into 1 minus p2 and suppose there are k links so it will be 1 minus pk right with this probability the packet will go from a to b so let's say this is p now what is the probability that acknowledgement will come from b to a so the probability will be 1 minus q1 into 1 minus q2 till 1 minus qk this with this probability the packet will go from b to a now what is the probability that packet and acknowledgement uh, both like packet go from a to b and acknowledgement comes from b to a so it will be p into q with p into q probability the packet will go from a to b and the acknowledgement will come from b to a right with this probability now if they ask you that what is the expected number of packets that you need to send for the just one packet successfully okay which means if you want to send one packet successfully from a to b successful transmission means that packet is going and that uh, acknowledgement also coming then what are the expected number of packets that you need to send for just one packet c with this probability there is a success then the expected number of packets will be with 1 upon p into q for just one packet this is expected number of packets for one packet right i hope you got it now there will be a questions regarding throughput also so they will uh, they will give you tp they will give you tt and they will ask you throughput so throughput will be efficiency into bandwidth which means how much efficiently we are able to utilize the bandwidth that is the throughput right just remember it and now in the next video we will be uh, we will be moving to different different other protocols that are using the pipeline